because myco is the only prerequisite for myco pl so it can refer rules only from that rule set not from loan pricing not loan pricing fw not loan underwriting not loan underwriting fw except for myco because it's on the rv mode perfect then what about loan pricing fw it can access can uh, from loan framework only exactly uh, the only the rules and framework. loan underwriting framework and perfect. myco perfect yes only those listed on this stack will be accessible so the one that's above the stack the loan application are not accessible perfect and the same applies for your loan underwriting fw also because again it's also on the same av mode okay and then the last one myco so what can it access rules from or from which rule set can it access or refer rules from prpc only all right so obviously from myco it can anyways access rules other than that it can access rules from prpc which is the base layer okay so combining your av and rv modes you should be able to design an optimum solution for your application so that i don't need to create the same copy of the rule in different rule sets instead even if it's in one or the other rule set i should be able to refer or i should be able to access them on the other required rule sets so that's the whole point okay right? so instead of creating multiple copies of the rules in different rule sets i can set the modes accordingly right so your generally we do suggest that whatever uh, new rule sets we create as a best practice we create it as av modes so that it's it's more accessible right so i don't need to define any prerequisites and all and you can have multiple prerequisites also if uh, required so my single rule set can be dependent upon multiple prerequisite rule sets and again you can define the order as well for your uh, prerequisites like for example now if i just um, go back to my organization rule set so i see xyz int as a prerequisite if required i can add in more okay right? so here you are you can access rules from these so called rule sets right prerequisites can be multiple again you can have them so this decision of you know what you are trying to refer or your code or your business logic is spread across how many rule sets so we consider all of these things and accordingly we will decide if it has to be on the av or on the rv mode okay may now we clear with this concept yes Are we good with this perfect right. so now when i say rule set stack right so the system uh checks after this when I mean, the priority is given to the top of the stack and then you know this happens during the run time so when you execute your code that's when the system starts checking the rules across your rule set stack first priority is always to the top of the stack and then if not found it it slowly digs deeper until the end of your application stack right Okay, so the yes. built-on application, if it is there, and uh, for in the, on the application stack, if I do not for the first rule set, if I do not find the rule, it will descend and it will at last check the built-on application, right? 
exactly after exactly. the application correct. stack is over correct correct so your stack i mean the one that we see here is only four rule mm -hmm. sets but ideally what is your stack is is going to be you can check on the profile here the first rule set is always going to be your personal rule set right when you do check checkouts or sorry when you do your private edits or checkouts so that is going to be given the topmost priority right after that comes your application organization framework and then finally your pega related rule sets will come so let me just uh, show that just a little here i i only see four rule sets doesn't mean your application is just built on these four no so even though for example you don't have a built on but still you should not say that i only have my application built on these four rule sets no it can never happen that way okay. so yes you see these are your rule sets so the first this is going to be your entire application stack Right, probably out of which this one is your personal rule set for your private edits and checkouts then your you know application organization rule set your ui kit then comes the rest of the prpc stuff so your application is built on all these rule sets right, right? and here you can have your uh, I mean, if at all you have a built-on application, again, that would also be listed out on the stack. Okay. So now you see what is the advantage of the AV mode. Suppose I have something in HRS, I can definitely access or refer rules from some uh, Pega end user, or I can access rules from some Pega rules legacy. Okay. So that's the advantage you get when you go for the AV mode. And uh, if we have a production rule set, uh, where it will mm -hmm. come on the operator profile on which, uh, for example, we have. Mm -hmm. So production rule set will, will generally not be listed on the uh, operator profile. Okay? Because that's, that's okay. entirely part of the uh, rule delegation, isn't it? So we, we don't directly see it on the uh application or you know the operator profile directly okay okay but we have the access to the uh, production yes, yes. Uh, right right okay. and one more important concept here is going to be the check-ins and checkouts of your rules right because when when i say there is a uh a separate rule set for your specific profile right so when i show this so there comes a rule set called admin at the rate hr so what is this so this rule set is going to consist of your checked out rules or rules that you work on a private edit basis which is only available for you right not for other operators or for other developers working on the environment so no one can access them except for you that's like a local copy that you are building okay. so for checking out a rule when why why should i even check out a rule why is this process check out check in private edit why should i go for them it's because when you are working as a team you are working as you know on the same environment suppose there is a requirement that one rule is handled by two different developers okay for for two different functionalities and one person starts working on it and suddenly the other person also starts working on it he saves obviously he is overriding the earlier person's changes is it yes so imagine the whole team working on the same rule and who whose version or whose copy is updated is probably the last one who saved the rule will will be the updated rule correct which means all the other changes are overridden now in order to 
kind of remove uh, these kind of discrepancies we have this concept called rule check in and check out so when you check out a rule it's like you are bringing in something from the from the code repository and you are making some changes onto it okay so while you are checking out a rule no other developers can work on the rule so they cannot directly work on it because you have already checked out the rule it is in your handover until unless you check in it back others cannot work on the same rule okay it's like you are you are trying to get the authority of the rule by checking out and once you play around with it you make changes and make sure it is perfect as expected then you check in it back right so that then rest of the team can start working on it so they can check out the rule and then they can start working on it okay so this check out is is possible when so for checking out a rule you need to have two eligibilities one is on the rule set level one is on the operator level so the rule set should allow for rule checkouts how do i do that is on the rule set security under the rule management you have this option called checkout okay so which means this rule set is enabled for rule checkouts first thing then the operator level as a developer or as an operator are you allowed to make changes on the rules so that can be part of your operator profile okay so you should be enabled for rule checkouts to check out some rules on your application so that's like a prerequisite two things one on the rule set level one on the operator level okay so let's see now i have checked out uh, sorry i i have enabled the rule set for check out So let me go to the operator. Yes, so on the operator profile also in the security. So allow a rule checkout. So if this is not enabled, the concerned person is not allowed for any rule checkouts, right? He cannot uh, update or manipulate any sort of rules. If this is not checked. Okay, so now let's see. Let me just randomly open any rule. So open the section. Right now, you see. earlier we used to just have save as delete and actions but now we also got an option called checkout so always a good practice to check out the rule first make your changes and then check in it back right so when i check out it gives me uh, you know an authority for handling these rule okay now in the same time if other operator wants to work So does he need to wait until I check in it back? So probably I will work on it for the entire day. Now, can I uh, or should the other operator keep on waiting until I check in it? Mm, uh, no, 
ideally no because i cannot have that kind of a scenario right i cannot keep on waiting for 2 3 days for the other developer to complete his work then i will start no that's not a good approach for parallel development so what we do is so if a rule is in a checked out state by a particular developer others can see it in the form of a private edit so they can see a private edit of this particular rule so which means it is like a local copy for them they can make changes they can validate it they can test it but they cannot deploy it or they cannot check in those changes right it's like just a test copy of the rule set using your private edit and these checked out rules are private edit will go on the operator profile so that's what is your so that's what is your operator rule set that we see which is always given the highest priority so that's why when you make some changes as a private edit so the new changes that you have brought will be implemented first so because they would be given the priority right so your private edit and check ins and check outs are three uh, considered together okay so now for example i made in some change here uh once the change is made okay and this put out leave once my changes are done i should check in it back into the repository okay so once i check in again the, the rule is now available for the team so anyone can check out the rule and they can start working on it okay and okay. now once i check in it back the system asks like for what purpose are you checking in okay so we need to give in some comments as in like this change is related to a particular story so and so or part of a particular functionality or a feature so and so a bit of comments have to be added uh I can probably some work in progress related to some story, something like this. I mean, your comments could be as uh, you no know, detailed as possible. Okay, so you can check in it back. And make sure before you check in all the. warnings or errors have to be cleared and only then you can check in your rule set okay and you can also see once you click on this tick mark you can see all the checked out rules of your application so when you have some bulk actions to take probably you have modified some 25 rules for a particular requirement so you checked out all of them now the thing is you have to check in each one of them individually so you should do this all over like 25 times so instead of that there are some bulk actions that i can choose so this is more suitable for your bulk check ins bulk check outs and discards these bulk check ins and check outs are more suitable when you have made changes to a lot of rules right so i think we have checked out two uh rules one is enable for a private edit 
I think this we made for a change on the, you know, the uh, portals, right? Some case manager links is what we changed as part of a private edit. And this section, yes, it is just a checked out rule. You can give in your comments and you can directly check in those rules. Right? You can just click start and then your uh, check-in process would start. Okay? So this wizard is suitable when you have a lot of rules to be acted upon. Okay? But if it's just one or two, we can go for the individual check-in and check out. And if we, while checking in, if we have any error while doing the bulk check-in, mm -hmm. if we mm -hmm. uh, face that there's one error in that particular section or particular rule, then what will happen? Mm -hmm. Yes, then you, you can see them here if in case something is not right, for example. Mm -hmm. So now I, I will have an error with this, right? I mean, I'm not able to yeah. check in this. Uh, let me give you some comments. So you see, there is a status that is being displayed here. So whether your uh, check-in is successful or not can be seen. Okay, so here I see the status is not successful. Why? Because all of this so-and-so uh, issues. So first I should go back, check the uh, rule, I mean, what went wrong, I should correct it. Then I can come back and finish the process. Right? So here also, it, this private checkout is not enabled for this action. So, so for each of it individually, I can know what went wrong. So even though it's still a, a bulk thing, I can individually assess what went wrong. Okay. Right. So I think that's all about the various you know, aspects when it comes to designing or creating your own rule sets and how do you version it or how do you, you know, uh, deal with the modes, be it your AV, RV, pen, your check-ins, check-outs, and private edit. Okay, so most of these are uh, design time aspects, like your AV, RV, but whereas check-ins, check-outs, and private edit, we, we do it on a regular basis. So daily task that that we do okay, so so a bit of hands-on on check-ins checkouts and private edit i mean if as already you are on a project you might have been aware of this okay, yes. where you check out and then check in properly yeah so are we good so far any questions uh, no questions now Okay, okay. I mean, uh, actually, we thought of taking it for an extra hour, but I think uh, this aspect of whatever we have discussed today, I mean, it, it needs a little bit of uh, re reading again because the AVRV modes could be a bit confusing. So just have a look at it and see I mean, if, if possible, try to experiment also. You create some rules across different rule sets. See if you are able to uh, access them across each other or not, right? I mean, like, just create two, uh, uh, two or more properties in each of these rule sets. Create one data transform, and see if you are able to access those properties in that DT or not. Simple. You can just uh, try that and check. Uh, 